Hey guys, I'm back. Um, so I've got some rocks here that I need to resin. So I wanted to show you that um, today. So first, uh, what we want to do is get some gloves on because this is very messy and sticks to everything. Okay, so we get a glove on each hand, if I can get it there. Okay, I'm going to set these aside real quick. Now I'm going to take like a little Dixie cup, or it doesn't have to be that, just some kind of container that you can pour the resin in. So the resin that I got is from uh, Amazon. I'm sure you can get it in the craft store. It's art resin, and it comes with a hardener, and it comes with the actual bottle of resin these two things are going to be mixed together to make the finished product. Um, that was $60 on Amazon. Sure, you could probably find a, another brand, maybe cheaper, something like that. It does go a long way, so that's the good thing. Okay, I'm taking the lids off of the bottles. So, um, here's my cup. The other thing is I use a little teaspoon, um, for measuring the stuff. You wanna make sure that you get pretty much equal amounts of the resin and the hardener or it will not work out very well. But most of the time I don't have an issue with this. So I just take my teaspoon, doesn't matter which one you put in first, but just pour and then I just try to lift up so I don't have a lot of drops. So have a little usually I have a spoon but I don't have one so I'm using a plastic fork so I'm going to make sure you get every bit of that out that you can again so that we have equal parts okay so I just kind of stick my fork there and hope that it doesn't fall over which it looks like it's going to and there's a hair be careful if you have animals because you don't want that in there. Okay, I'm gonna set this bottle here so it doesn't fall over. So oh. it's not going well, guys. I usually have a different setup here, so of course I'm in my room again. All right. So well, you can see this. I'm going to pour equal amount of the hardener as best I can here. Get a little bit more in there. Gosh dang it. That dang fork. Killing me. Okay. Barely got that in there. Alright. So, again, I'm going to scoop that out as much as I can. You may have to end up making some more. It does go quite a long ways, but if you want a really nice finish on the top of your stones, you really want to get a good extra layer of the resin on there. Okay, so I usually just set that aside. I think you have about, let me stick these bottles out of the way. I think the instructions say you have about 40 minutes to work with the resin before it, you can't do anything else with it. So just mix it real good. You want to make sure it's starting to get kind of a more smoky tint to it, I guess. Cloudy. Instructions say to mix it for like three minutes or something like that. I never do, and it's always fine. So I just make sure I'm getting everything off the sides, scrape it all. Mix it all up. Alright, I'm going to do my best to get the rest of this off of here. I usually use a spoon and not a fork, but it's just what I had, so. Alright, so I'm going to set that aside. So you want to take uh, your first rock, or however many rocks you have. I usually just kind of dip my I hope you guys can see this. I can't see a lot of what I'm doing here. 
I usually dip my finger in and I just do a really light resin on the back. Just a really, really thin layer. I mean, you don't have anything back here really to seal, but it just makes it look better all over. And then I just kind of do the same thing around the sides. You don't want any drips, so just, and I just usually start taking all fingers and massaging this in. Again, you don't need like a thick layer around the sides and the back, so it's the front that we really want to make sure we get a good layer on. Okay. Again, I usually have a spoon, but I don't, so I'm going to just have to try and do the best I can here. Okay, so get a pretty good layer on the front and just kind of gently swipe it back and forth so you cover the whole area. My biggest issue with resin is that I'll get some fingerprints in there and then I'll have to redo it. So try to do this in a well-lit area so that you can kind of see if you've missed any spots. Okay, once you think you've got a pretty good coat on there, you want to take a straw. And you want to blow the bubbles out. It's really hard to see the bubbles, but I have yet to be able to get every single bubble out of mine. I've tried to use a blow dryer, but my setting is too high and it just blows the resin everywhere. So I find that a straw works the best. Um, it's kind of satisfying though, because when you do this, you can see all the tiny bubbles popping. You guys probably can't see it, but you can see it when it's close up and you, you're doing it in person. So I kind of just tilt it around in the light and see if it looks like I've missed any spots. And we've got a little spot here. The corners and the edges seem to be the parts where I always have issues. So let me just go back over that gently. Make sure you're keeping track of which end of the straw you're putting your mouth on because trust me, you do not want it to be the end where your fingers have touched it with the resin. It's really gross tasting. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So what I do, um, after this is I have a plastic bin and I'll show you a picture of it at the end of this tutorial but I just lay it down in there. I have a Silpat um, silicone type cookie sheet thing on the bottom of my um, storage container over here. You don't have to have that. I just have it in there. Um, when they dry they're pretty easy to just peel off but as long as you're putting them on any kind of plastic I could even put it on this and it would be fine, but um, it should peel off fine. If you start to feel like you've got too much on it and it's going to get runny around the edges, just keep an eye on it and try to swipe it as much as you can. It's a bubble there. Um, because when you peel it off and you have that layer around the edge that has hardened, it's not pretty and then you have to kind of go to the point of filing it down, sanding it down, and it it sucks. So anyways, I'm gonna lay this one over here because it looks pretty good. Sometimes when they're done, I have to do another layer. Not a big deal. Um, you know, if you have to do it, you have to do it, so. All right, I'm gonna lay this over here. Also at the end, I'll show you a finished um, one that I've done with resin. Okay, so I'm, I may have to make some more resin here, but let's go ahead and do the witch. 
So turn her over. This time I'll just pour a little bit on there. I mean, a little does go a long way, um, but for these bigger size rocks, I have a feeling I'm gonna have to definitely make some more up, which is fine. It doesn't take that long. Unfortunately, I got a chip over here. Hopefully that resin will make that a little smoother. Now just work it in with your hands, your fingers. Work it into the sides. Corners. If you're using a stone that's got a lot of little um, holes and stuff in it, you can resin that rock before you start to paint. And that gives you a, a nice um, smooth coat to work with because you can paint over the top of resin. And a lot of times when I resin something, I see like a little flaw because the resin really brings everything out. Um, then I will go over it again, um, the paint pen or whatever I used before to just try to touch it up. And then I will have to resin it again. So. I'm going to lay this down. This is a big rock, so I'm going to probably just pour quite a bit of this on there. Move it over a little bit. I may even just have to pour the rest of it. So, I'll do that for now. I've never had the resin smear anything, so just make sure it's good and dry before you do that so you don't have any issues. See how that really makes those colors pop out? It's so cool. I don't enjoy using the resin because it's just quite a process, but it definitely makes the finished product a lot nicer. Okay, so now I'm gonna take my straw. I feel like I'm gonna pass out. Okay, I think I'm gonna use the rest of the resin that's in here for this rock. And then I'll end the tutorial with that because I've already seen the two rocks, so I don't need to do the third one. So your fingers stick to everything. So literally make sure you have everything you need before you put your gloves on and start because after that, you're pretty much out of luck if you need anything. <laughs> then you just have to take your gloves off and then you have to get new ones on. And if you're like me, I hate wasting stuff like that. So I need to get it all on the same, all on the same shot. Okay. I forgot to mention that the resin is self-leveling, at least this brand is. Um, so when it sits there for a while, it should even itself out because you can see right now it has big streaks and stuff in it. Okay. I think I've gotten most of the bubbles out. Again, if I haven't, I can always go over it later. So, look how shiny that is though. It's so pretty. All right, so 
I'm going to lay this over in my container. Okay, I'm going to try to pick one of these other ones up that I already resined and show that to you guys. It's dry and I know I'm picking it up, but I'm just keeping my fingers on the bottom of it. But this is one that I painted last night. You guys probably saw the picture. Um, as you can see close up, like in the tire rim, the resin really brings out every little mark. So I can see some little paint pen strokes there that I didn't completely fill in, but really you can't tell that much. So it's not that big of a deal. So there it is. Just going to lay that one back over here. And I will take off my gloves and I will show you guys the container, which I mean, you can use any kind of container, but I'll just show you what I have. Usually I try to take my gloves off before I fold them inside out. Um, let me take this off of here real quick. Okay, so. Um, also, I have over here a bottle of hand sanitizer and a paper towel. I always use the same little um, tablespoon here, so if you just take... A little bit of the hand sanitizer squirt it on there I'll show that to you in a minute but it cleans that up so I'm gonna come up here and there is the container that I keep them in um, I have a Malamute and he's got really long hair and a lot of it so I have to be very careful where I resin and if you have any kind of animals you you know will have to do that um, I always put the lid to the container back on after I've resin so that nothing gets in there and sticks to it um, but usually in about like 12 hours it's pretty dry um, but I usually let them sit for a little bit longer just to make sure that they are really dry so okay don't mind my pajama bottoms I haven't gotten dressed yet today which is pretty normal for me especially when I'm painting rocks so I'm gonna put this back on the little setup I have here. Maybe. Okay, I'm gonna move these out of the way. I'll throw those in the trash can and I'll just show you guys how I clean. I also clean the bottles. There. This plastic fork I don't care about so I will not clean it. Okay, so I'll just take a paper towel you can either put the hand sanitizer on the paper towel or the spoon, it really doesn't matter. Now that I've taken my gloves off, I have to be careful trying to pick this up, so... I will rinse off the handle first. Sorry. Get your thumb down in there and scoop that resin out. And then you can continue using your same little measuring spoon. So you don't waste a bunch of plastic ones or whatever. Okay, so that one's pretty clean. I could just leave it over here to dry, which I will do. Um, I also like to clean off the bottles. Now, here's one thing that I did not do, or I didn't know. When the resin bottles get to you, they have a little red plug in the top of them. Well, not knowing what it was, I just took it out and threw it away. So. You really want to keep that plug because um, I guess it helps with the buildup of the, the resin and the hardener around the lid on the inside. But really I haven't had much problems with that. I just take um, the hand sanitizer again, squirt it on there, and then I take the bottle. Hold on, let me get this up a little bit so you guys can see better. Didn't really help a whole lot. I need a new setup. Okay, so take the hand sanitizer. I just put the napkin and the paper towel around the lid and I just twist it like that. And then I'll set that aside. And if you have any on the outside of your bottle, you can clean it like that too. I 
because the hardener is the one that gets the most gunk on the outside of it. Okay, so once you got all that cleaned up, you just put your lids back on. And that's about it. So, that's how you resin. Um, I'll take this off again. And then just make sure you're careful when you throw everything away. I don't typically use my straws over and over again, but sometimes I'll use them, but I'll put like a little mark at the end of it so I make sure I know which end to put my mouth on. I'll do this rock next, but I won't keep you guys for that one. It takes a while to upload these videos, so I try not to make them too long. Um, but I really appreciate all of the positive feedback I've gotten from everybody. Um, it's really flattering. I'm very humbled and very thankful that you guys really enjoy what I do. I really enjoy what I do, so if I can share that with everybody else and give someone else some inspiration, um, then, then I'm happy to do that. Um, so you can find me on Facebook and Instagram. Um, it's called Rockin' Art, R-O-C-K apostrophe N Art by Jen, um, or subscribe to my channel here on YouTube and I will do my best to continue to upload fun tutorial-like videos for you guys. So I appreciate you all watching. Thank you. Have a great day.